Yo, my headliner peeps, what's crack a and welcome to week 16. My tight end rankings here to get you ready for your fantasy football championship. For those of you that are playing to get into the fantasy football championship, or for those of you that are trying to play for a toilet bowl, or just let not finish in last place, whatever it may be, welcome to all of you that still are submitting lineups this week. Let's go ahead and jump into it, but real quick, first off, don't forget... The Fantasy Headliners Draft Guide is available for pre-order right now at thefantasyheadliners.com. You can get it at a reduced price, and as soon as it becomes available, you will get access to it through our website. So if you want to pre-order that now, do so right after this video, thefantasyheadliners.com, and get your pre-order for the 2021 Fantasy Headliners Draft Guide. All right, let's go ahead and jump into it. We'll start at number 20 and work our way up. Number 20, Mr. Cole Komet. From the Chicago Bears, a lot of people last week were taking a look at Cole Komet. He had had a couple of decent weeks back-to-back, -back, a couple of weeks of seven targets each. And then last week against Minnesota, two targets, two receptions, and 12 yards. Now, the concern about Cole Komet moving forward is that him and Jimmy Graham are still seeing a lot of split snaps. Last week, in terms of offensive snaps, Cole Komet did see... 64 offensive snaps. That is 100% of the offensive snaps. He was out there the entire time. That's awesome. That's what we love to see. Jimmy Graham was out there 53% of the time. So he is out there far more than Jimmy Graham is. But when you're out there 100% of the offensive snaps and you only get two targets, it's clear that people are looking elsewhere. So for Cole Komet, he is a guy that will continue to grow, and he might be a breakout candidate for me next season. But in terms of the fantasy football championships, not anyone that I'm risking it with this week. Irv Smith Jr. last week, not a not a great performance. You know, four targets, 37 yards. Would have liked to see a little bit more like the week before in Tampa. But he did play 82% of the offensive snaps, which is a lot higher than he has played all season long so they were definitely putting Irv Smith out there a lot more than what we had seen recently and people are are bringing up Tyler Conklin and I, and I get it and I understand why you might be mentioning him right now as well but Tyler Conklin really hasn't been fantasy viable all season long it's always been Kyle Rudolph and Irv Smith Jr. now no Kyle Rudolph Tyler Conklin kind of jumping into the mix a little bit. But he's only playing the last couple of weeks 57% and 66% of offensive snaps. So those of you that are super on board with Tyler Conklin, just keep in mind, he's not playing nearly the offensive snaps that Irv Smith Jr. is. Number 18, Dalton Schultz. If you want to get six fantasy points out of your, out of your tight end, you're going to get it from Dalton Schultz. That's basically what it is. That's what he's going to do for you. Hayden Hurst at number 17 has not been good as of recently. And then all of a sudden last week decided to show up. Shows up last week with no Julio Jones. I mean, it's great to see him, obviously. You know, you want to see everybody doing well. But in the three of four previous weeks uh, before week 15, he had less than 10 receiving yards. This is his first touchdown last week since week six. He hasn't had more than 50 receiving yards since week nine. So Hayden Hurst still is not doing anything in this offense. I will throw him in here because he does have a shot at a touchdown with no Julio Jones. At number 16, Austin Hooper. Austin Hooper made his way back last week and scored a touchdown. That's always good to see. Glad to see him back after the neck injury held him out. But I would love to see a little bit more consistency out of Austin Hooper. There's been stretches this year where we've been like, okay, here we go. Now we're starting to get a hang of it, okay? Like right before he went down uh, with that uh, emergency appendectomy, he had seen 7, 10, and 6 targets leading up to that. Then he had that emergency appendectomy. He comes back only two targets in week 10, but then five in week 11. And we're thinking, okay, maybe he's working his way back. He gets a touchdown against Jacksonville, but only 13 yards. But then only two targets against Tennessee. And he did have six targets last week. Now we're going up against the New York Jets this week. It could be, they won 20 to six last week. The first half was a lot better than what it was in the second half. We'll see. 
if they keep their foot on the pedal the entire game or take it off in the second half like they did the week before. Number 15, Jared Cook. With no Michael Thomas and Drew Brees back, I would love to throw Jared Cook out there, but the dude has just been super inconsistent all season long. Outside of the beginning of the year when he had four touchdowns in three games, he really hasn't done much of anything. And his snap percentages, they haven't been great either. I mean, 50% or 58% last week, 57 the week per, uh, week before that, and the prior weeks before that, 36, 36, 37, 30, and 36. So he's not even a guy that's out on the field an awful lot right now. If you want to try and risk it this week going up against Minnesota, you can because, again, there's no Michael Thomas. He could be the number two target at any point in time. But to me, it's more along the stat line of what we've seen this season where we see maybe 20 to 30 yards and a touchdown if we are lucky. At number 14, George Kittle, the long you the long awaited wait is over. I that didn't sound right at all, but that's what we've got right now. George Kittle finally making his way back this week. Everyone's been waiting on him. It does look like he is going to be playing this week. Now, this is the big thing I have to say about George Kittle, okay? If you own him, you're excited. You want to get him out there, and I get it. And if you own him and you have somebody else on your team that's in the back half of the 15 uh, to 20 range here, then yeah, absolutely play him. But anybody in front of him, I'm going to be weary about. George Kittle, for me, still, I'm bordering on a start and sit right now. I really haven't made that, my main, I haven't really made my mind up on this one yet because I want to see more about how much he practices this week. It looks like he is practicing. It looks like he will be back, but I want to see a little bit more. I want to make sure he doesn't re-aggravate anything. I want to make sure he's 100% ready to go. Now, if you were to look at me and say, Kyle, he practices the rest of the week. He's good to go. Do we play him or not if he's 100%? If I know George Kittle's 100%, he goes above Ertz, Gasecki, Ingram, and really he flies all the way up to number seven for me. And you'll see who I have in front of him here in a couple of minutes. But for me, there is enough upside there to throw him out there. And he plays more than enough offensive snaps that we'll probably see him out there. Even if they were to reduce it a little bit, we would still see enough out of him to get maybe in that 50 to 70 yard range and hopefully a touchdown. Right now, the tight end position is an absolute disaster. You're playing for upside right now. There are some guys that are safe. And again, I've said this over the last several weeks. We're keeping it simple. We are going for guys that we know are going to get looks. George Kittle is going to get some looks but it's how much he actually plays that is the concern. We will probably be live Saturday morning before kickoff this week here on the Fantasy Headliners. I'll try to update you a little bit more then and see what we have. Zach Ertz at number 13. Last week started to finally creep his way back into fantasy relevance last week, which was you know good to see for those of you that have held on to him. Seven targets last week. Only two receptions though, but that's okay. Back up to 75% of his offensive snaps. Zach Ertz is a start for me this week because it is a great matchup against Dallas. Mike Gusecki at number 12. Mike Gusecki looks like he is trending towards being on the field this week. No guarantees as of yet. Right now, he continues to be a limited participant in practice. If he plays, I'm okay with running with him. But again, we have to wait and see what happens. In his previous three games that he was on the field before the injury in weeks 12, 13, and 14, he had four touchdowns during that span. Him and Tua were starting to get on the same page a little bit. Hopefully we see that when he comes back. At number 11, Evan Ingram, the guy that's driven us nuts all season long. The targets are absolutely there for him. If you kick out weeks 14 and weeks 10, so week 10 he had three targets and week 14 he had four targets. If you go back to week 7 and take those weeks out, you've had 9, 10, 10, 9, 8, and 7 targets. The targets are coming. The targets are there. He's getting the looks. He's just It's just not turning into a whole lot. 
We'll see if Daniel Jones makes it out this week or if it's Colt McCoy. But again, he's seeing quite a bit of targets. If it is Colt McCoy this week, I probably bump him down a little bit more. If it ends up being Daniel Jones, I might bump him, uh, might leave him right where he is. We'll have to continue to monitor that situation. Let's head into the top 10 now. At number 10, Rob Gronkowski. Rob Gronkowski, last week, kind of a backseat to uh, the wide receivers. And I'm wondering if that ends up happening again this week. I mean, the last couple of weeks have not been great. A total of 31 receiving yards over the last two weeks. In week 12 against Kansas City, he had 106 receiving yards. That's his only 100-yard game of the season. And in fact, since you play, since he played, he had in week six, seven, and eight, he had a streak of three games with touchdowns in each of those games. That's kind of where his fantasy re- uh, value reached peak fantasy. However, since then, since week nine, he's had games of two, 51, 25, 106, two, and 29. Only two touchdowns during that span. He's heavily touchdown dependent right now. He's got three wide receivers that are dynamic on the outside that are seeing a lot of looks. They can run the ball very well this week against Detroit. So I am worried about his upside this week. But the one thing we know about Rob Gronkowski, he's got that connection with Tom Brady and he can find the end zone at any point in time. And number nine, Dallas Goddard. Dallas Goddard for me is still the safest tight end in the Philadelphia. Yes, Zach Ertz is making his way back to fantasy relevancy. But as I told you a few minutes ago, Zach Ertz, his snap percentage is in the mid 70s right now. Dallas Goddard is in the high 80s. In fact, he has played at least, and if it's a game that he hasn't been hurt in, you know, in week three, he got hurt. He only played in six offensive snaps. But in all of his other healthy games, The least amount of offensive snaps he has seen has been 79%. 79, 89, 84, 93, 100, 184, 86, 88. Even with Zach Ertz back, he is still playing in the high 80 percentage of snaps. Going up against Dallas, again, this week it could end up being a shootout, which means that Dallas Goddard is going to be on the field quite a bit. At number eight, Eric Ebron. If you watch the start and sit video, my apologies again. The, the fantasy fog is going on in my brain right now. We have been going 16 weeks of 11 episodes a week, and that doesn't even include the live show and other various content that we are putting out. And I made a comment about Eric Ebron not having a very good game, completely forgetting that he got absolutely torched and only played 10 offensive snaps last week against Cincinnati. So my bad, okay? Yes, I watched the game. Yes, I knew he got hurt. Then I got into talking in my video, and I just completely blanked. As of right now, as of this recording, he's practiced one day, and it was a full participant. They expect him to be back this week against Indianapolis. Hopefully, he gets back to seeing some of those targets that we saw in the previous weeks. That's where his fantasy value is made. We need to see those targets, and India is going to be... I mean, they're going to be a good matchup for Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh's going to have to be ready to throw it, and Eric Ebron is going to have to be a participant in that if they want to get this dub. And number uh, seven, Noah Fant. We we want ourselves some Noah Fant this week, people. All right? Coming off a great game last week, 11 targets, 8 receptions, 68 yards, and a touchdown. Absolutely loving it. Going up against the Los Angeles Chargers this week, we need... A big game from him again this week. And hopefully, we take take out week 14. Okay, we're going to take out week 14 here real quick because, you know, week 14, he only played five snaps before leaving. At first, they said he was hurt. Then they said he was sick. Um, but he saw seven snaps back in week 10 and then five in week 11. It dropped all the way down to 2%, then back up to se- or two targets, and then back up to seven. He missed that game and then 11 targets after that. His snap percentages haven't been that bad either. Last week dropped all the way down to 69%. (laughs) But before that, in the games leading up to that, at least 70% of the snaps since he came back in week 7. And again, taking out week 14 when you only played 5 snaps and was done for the day, at least 70% of the snaps every single week. So again, another guy that's getting on the field quite a bit. 
Logan Thomas, baby, my manscaped must start of the week. And I tell you what, you know, I've been pushing you all towards Logan Thomas for several weeks now, trying to get you back on the bus because I said it was coming. The targets were there. The the results weren't there, but the targets were absolutely there. And now the guy since week uh, week six is a top five tight end. Last week, his best week of the season, 16 targets, 13 receptions, 101 yards. Two weeks ago against Pittsburgh, nine targets, nine receptions, 98 yards. He's got touchdowns and back-to-back weeks in 12 and 13. So we'd love him to find the end zone again, obviously. And he gets Carolina this week. Let's go with some Logan Thomas, especially if Alex Smith is going to be starting. We know Alex Smith loves to to keep the checkdowns going a little bit. Even with Dwayne Haskins last week seeing 16 targets, that's definitely going to come down a little bit. But still, if it comes down to that 9-7 and seven mark, we're just fine. At number five, Robert Tunyon. At number four, Mark Andrews. Three, TJ Hawkinson. Two, Darren Waller. One, Travis Kelsey. These have not changed for me at all. These are the guys that we are playing that the the section of Mark Andrews and Robert Tunyon, those are high upside plays, okay? Those guys have high upside every single week. Robert Tunyon is, is dropping TDs like nobody's business. He's got five straight games with a touchdown now. And yep, 100%, the dude is touchdown dependent, but a lot of these other tight ends are as well. And Robert Tunyon continues to see those red zone targets. So we will continue to run him out there. Mark Andrews coming off a solid game last week and gets a good matchup this week. We got to get Mark Andrews in that lineup. 66 yards and a touchdown last week. Since week 10, really turned it around. This offense is looking a lot better over the last two weeks. Back-to-back weeks with more than 40 points. But really since week 10, that's when Mark Andrews has been playing a lot better. 61, 96, 78, and 66 yards. Some of his best games of the season. In fact, those were his best games of the season in terms of yards. So, this week going up against the New York Giants, let's cross our fingers that we see it again. TJ Hawkinson, a little bit of a step back last week. Not a great week for Hawk on only four targets and 18 yards, but he had 89, 84, and 43 yards with the touchdown coming into that week. So, again, TJ Hawkinson going up against Tampa Bay, a high-scoring game, 100% still on board with him there at number three. And then Darren Waller and Travis Kelsey. If you own either of these guys, you play them. If you own somebody else, you don't play them over him, okay? Kelsey and Waller will always be locked into your starting tight end position. There you have it, Headliner Nation. Hopefully, we've got you all set to go for week 16. Like the video if you appreciate the content. Leave a comment down below if you've got a question. And as always, if you're new here to the Fancy Headliners, hit that subscribe button and become a part of Headliner Nation today. Everyone stay safe and stay healthy over Christmas. Merry Christmas to all and to all a fantasy football championship win. I'll catch you all in the next episode. See you later.